Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia, based on the famous play and novels by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Well, Mama, we certainly got a table without waiting very long. We didn't wait at all. Always so accurate, Mama. Oh, well, I guess I'll sit down and Roger and David can sit between us. They're certainly taking their time about checking their hats, aren't they? Great conversation going on between them and the hat check girl. I'm not grudging. Knowing the hat check girl is just the sort of thing that gets a person a table in a crowded restaurant without waiting. I thought that coming in at the height of the lunch hour, we'd never get seated. Mm, So do I. You're Mr. Killian. Well, he seems to be quite the man about town. Our Mr. Killian is the kind of a man about town that has a restaurant all his own, a barber all his own, a tailor all his own. He's very correct. Mm -hmm. But I'm very fond of him. Say, Mama, where do you put your pocketbook when you're sitting at a restaurant table? On my lap, of course. Well, it feels so sort of cluttered and precarious. My napkin slips off. My knees aren't happy. Your life is very complicated. I know. And it's you who makes it complicated. Here we go again, being blamed for everything. Well, you insist on moving back to New York, so what happens? I have to make trips into town I wouldn't have to make otherwise. And how you hate it. High heels, pocketbook. And luncheons in swanky restaurants? Can't wait to eat. I'm starving. Here are the men now. Oh, good. All settled? Is the table all right? Couldn't be better, Roger. You're certainly a man of influence. (laughs) Mom is impressed. Claudia. I'll call the waiter. We haven't got so much time. David, now you are not going to start this rushing business with your meal. Take your time eating. Rush afterwards. Is that an order? Yes. Your lunch order. Waiter. Waiter. Menus, please. Uh, David. What are we going to eat? We? Hmm. What do I have to do with we? Well, I have to know what you're going to eat before I decide what I'm not going to eat. I mean, what I'm going to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, why? Well, you certainly don't think I'm going to go ahead and order the same thing, do you? Darling, you order what you want, and I'll order what I want. Mama, do you hear the way he's talking to me? Independent young man, isn't he? Roger, what are you going to eat? Well, I haven't seen the menu yet. I never make up my mind until I see the menu. And I can never make up my mind once I see the menu. My daughter suffers from an acute desire to eat everything on the menu, Mr. Kidd. Mama, really? Everything except brains, that is. She doesn't like brains. That is obvious. Eating and having them are two quite different matters. Oh, here's the waiter now with the menus. Uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Do you wish to order now or shall I... Well, we'll think about it for a moment if you don't mind and I'll I'll call you. Uh, Thank you very much, monsieur. Oh, what an enormous menu. My, my. Well, this is going to be very complicated. Now, David, what are we going to eat? I'm just deciding what I'm going to eat. Mmm, mussels. Mussels. I don't think I've ever eaten mussels. Claudia, my dear, just for once, order something you know you like. Whenever you go into a restaurant, you always order something you've never eaten before, and you always end up not liking it, and I have to eat it for you. Nonsense. I always like it. Mm-hmm. Remember the snails? Well, well, that was different. Oh. Who would like snails? Oh. And if I'm not going to order things, how am I going to find out if I don't like them? Now, let me see. Let me see. Claudia, I admire your spirit of adventure. Thank you, Roger. Royal chicken on Virginia ham with mushroom sauce. Hmm. Mm, that sounds tempting. Oh, Mama, I'd like that. So why don't you order it? It's very good here. Quite the speciality. Oh, well, my mind's not completely made up, but I'm leaning towards it. David? You decided what you're going to eat yet? What's it to you? Everything. I am going to order one thing. You are going to order another thing. Then we'll exchange. That way we'll both have both. And uh, who says I want both? Darling, it's much better than having to eat a whole plate full of the same. I have told you a million times I don't like eating from someone else's plate in a restaurant. so stuffy. Stuffy or not, I don't like it. All right, we don't have to eat from each other's plates. We will exchange plates halfway through. You will, but I won't. Oh, David. I order one dish, and I eat one dish. Mama... What do you do with a man like that? Ignore him. Exactly. Pay no further attention to David, Claudia. You, Mama, and I will work out a little scheme of fair exchange among ourselves. Now, do you hear that, David? Even Roger will exchange. Now, aren't you ashamed? I am not. I haven't done this in years, but I love it. Let's see. 
Uh, Mom is going to have the chicken on ham. Yes, my mind's made up. And chicken on ham. Roger, mm. what are you having? Well, um, I thought I'd have the New England dinner. Oh, I hate corned beef. Oh, then I certainly can't order the New England dinner. Good. Um, why don't I have the veal parmesan? Mm. Veal parmesan. Is that the veal with the cheese business on top? Oh, it's excellent here. Mm, I like that. And let me see. That takes care of veal and chicken. Now, what about meat? Well, their, their mixed grill is delicious. Mama, like mixed grill? I'm not mad about mixed grill. The calf's liver is exquisite sautéed in onions. Onions. <gasps> mm, that settles it, onions. Well, gives us pretty good selection, wouldn't you say? I'll call the waiter over. David, old man, what are you going to have? I am having the roast beef. You're sure that's what you want? Yes, that's what I want. Fine. Fine. Uh, waiter. Uh, waiter. We're ready to give our order now. Uh, oui, monsieur. Ready? Uh, one veal parmesan. Veal parmesan. One calf's liver. One calf's liver. Uh, smothered in onions. Mm. Smothered mm. in onions. One chicken on ham. Mm. Un poulet soufflage. And um, one roast beef. Medium roast beef. rare. Medium he likes rare. it pink in the middle and crusty on the outside. And a baked potato. Well done. Oui, madame. Uh, thank you very much for the details, darling. Well, isn't that the way you like it? I usually can take care of myself. Well, I just wanted to be sure it was the way you like it. Oh, and waiter, afterwards, a mixed green salad with a little garlic rubbed on the bowl. Uh, just a little. Uh, oui, monsieur. A little garlic. A petit peu. Un soupçon. Immediately. There now. It will all be here in a moment. Service is very good here. David, you're going to be sorry, my good man. Eating your lonesome roast beef and not a taste of my veal or mama's chicken. That's what you get for being so independent. Mm -hmm. Am I to be persecuted because I have principles? Of course you are. Not sharing in a restaurant. I never heard of such a thing. Well, that's half the point of going to a restaurant, to taste as many things as possible. Well, don't you care at all what the people around you are saying? No. People around, if they have any sense, are probably doing exactly the same Just thing. when are you so self-conscious, anyway? Oh, there are certain things that I cannot stoop to, thank you. What a performance you're putting on. If we didn't know you better, we'd take you seriously. Then it's too bad you know me better. I can't wait to start eating. I'm starving. Now then, let's organize ourselves, ladies, and not a bite to the enemy. Not a bite. Now, how, how do you like to do it? Divide each portion into three parts or, or change around or, or what? Well, I think that's the best way, and that way we'll get a taste of each other's while it's still warm. Yes, mm. and I'm the kind of eater who likes to eat all of one thing first. I like a bite of this, a bite of that, a bite... Mm. Well, I hope you're all enjoying yourself. We are, we are. and you'll be sorry. Well, I guess it's like everything else in the world, Roger. You can't expect everybody to cooperate, mm. can you? There's always going to be one rugged individual. And it's the rugged individuals who have saved civilization. Mm, that's what rugged individuals always say to themselves, to console themselves. I just hate to see you lose out, darling. Well, thank you for worrying. Now, here no, we are. Me. Ville parmesan. Uh, here, please. Chicken on ham. For me. <laughs> oh, it looks delicious. And calf's liver. Right here. Oh, how it smells. I love onions. And, monsieur, no more roast beef. What did you say? I am sorry, monsieur, but uh, we are all out of roast beef. <clears throat> I, I see. He takes the blow nobly. Doesn't he? But we have excellent bluefish. Uh, no, thank you. No bluefish. What uh, What else do you have that's ready? Uh, let me see. Oh, there you are, mama. Some onions. Calves ever for you? I will get the menu for you, sir. Fine. Thank you very much. Yeah, you are, Claudia. Some chicken and some ham. Mm, and for you, wonderful. Roger, too. Oh, that does look delicious. Uh, could I have one little mushroom? Well, of course. Oh, me too. Look at this veal. Look at it. Sizzling hot and just smothered in cheese. Mm. And done to a turn. Uh, here, Claudia. Now then, here's for you. Thank you. And Mrs. Brown. Mm -hmm. For you. And thank Here you. is your calves, liver, and onions. Oh, if you could just see yourselves. We're not interested. I think we did that all very efficiently. Well, here we go. I'm drooling. I can't decide which to eat first. I feel as if I'm eating three meals. I don't know which I'm going to enjoy most. <laughs> oh, Roger, I'm so glad you took the veal. I never had the sense to take veal. It's so pale, and I love it. Here, I... Uh... Give me a little taste of that. Go away. Aren't you selfish? Me selfish, David. Go away. You're a scavenger. Mm, that veal is good. 
Is the calf's liver good? You're not going to find out from me. Get away. Well, Roger, you, you wouldn't refuse your partner a little piece of calf's liver, would you? I certainly would. I'll just put it on my bread plate. David, plank. I Intruder, never... I'll take an onion for Mama. My oh, old son lost. Stay out of my place. Well, would you all have me go hungry just because I ran out of roast beef? Certainly would, you uh, bolt facer. Oh, get away. Get away. Excellent calf's liver. Cooked just right, not too well done. See, David, now that's all you're going to have. You are not a member of our club. Mm, it just does a man's heart good for one's wife and friends to turn against him when ill fortune begets him. Just for that, I ought to have a little piece of that chicken, Mrs. Don't Brown. Don't you dare. Mm, you're not planning to eat that drumstick, oh, I you? certainly am. I'm going to use it in self-defense, if nothing else. Uh, I'll take a little piece of the dark meat and a little piece of ham. Mama, you're letting yourself be robbed. What can I do? I wouldn't stand for it. Mm, this is good. I don't mind sharing, but I won't be robbed. David, you know, he reminds me of some people. Some what? Some people. They want everything to be given to them and give nothing in return. Exactly. Well, perhaps that's because they have nothing to give in return. That's true. But, David, my boy, you might have had something to give in return if you hadn't been so smug. You refused to enter into our pact. And now that we are rich and you are poor, all of a sudden you believe in sharing the wealth. I marvel at how greedy some people are. Not greedy, just not forgiving. And Speak for yourself, all David. All right, all right. Have it your way. Lock me out because your larders are full and my closet is bad. Oh, you're breaking my heart. Now, I'll just have one more little piece of Claudia's calf's liver and you... some of her onion. David, too proud to share, but not too proud to steal. They're not the same thing at all. No, aren't you conscious of other people watching? No. No, I'm not. Sharing is whimsy. Stealing is necessity. I am not ashamed. Oh, 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 how the man rationalizes. Well, I've hardly had anything to eat. Your husband has stuffed himself for you. Pig. You have just had a lesson in living, Claudia. From now on, you'll know how to protect yourself. Uh, here is the menu, monsieur. Mm, the menu? You wish to order an entree, monsieur? The steak is excellent. Steak? I, I couldn't eat another thing. Just bring me dessert and coffee along with the rest of them. Roger. Oui, monsieur. Did you hear that, Roger? He is stuffed. And I feel as if I'd had but a crumb. That is life. The honest star. And the dishonest eat. What an excellent lunch you ordered, my friends. What an excellent lunch. When you're planning a home or club parties, there's one way to reduce difficulties to a minimum. Put Coca-Cola at the top of your refreshment list. It doesn't matter whether guests are young or old. It doesn't matter whether there are a dozen or a hundred. Ice cold Coke quickly helps create an atmosphere of hospitality. Oh, uh, Mr. King. Have you an old crust you don't mind giving a hungry man? <laughs> so the three of you got robbed of your lunch, didn't you? Uh, the joke was on us. A very hungry joke. If you can think of a way I can get even with my partner, let me know before tomorrow. Well, you're not going to have much of a chance to get even with David tomorrow. He's not coming into town. Oh, that's right. He's staying up in Eastbrook about the, uh, the schoolhouse plans. And uh, to be sidetracked, of course, uh, by Jared Tucker, of course. Jared Tucker. How is the old man? Jared Tucker is fine, but uh, unfortunately, he doesn't know what time it is. Uh, what? That's right. He's out to buy himself a watch. Well, I hope he has a good time at it. See you, Joe. I'm going to get myself a bag of peanuts. I'm starving. I can understand that. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again tomorrow at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir. And remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For Coca-Cola makes any pause the pause that refreshes. And ice-cold Coca-Cola is everywhere. This broadcast of Claudia was supervised and directed by William Brown Maloney. And now, here's a word from your friendly neighbor... Who bottles Coca-Cola? <laughs>